Hey guys, welcome to Jobertech channel. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through managing asynchronous operations in Flutter. We'll harness the power of state notifier provider to seamlessly handle loading, data, and error state of your UI. So let's dive in. I have a phone out UI here. But as you can see, once I signed in, we're not seeing any indication that there is an ongoing backend operation. This is not a good user experience because the user might think that the app crashed or an issue has arisen. And when we try to throw an error here, to mimic the behavior when the user enters the wrong SMS code, an alert dialog pops up showing the error as expected. But if we see inside our class, I've added a try catch block inside our function to handle any possible error. But think of it, is it really the job of UI class to catch an error? This might be acceptable when you're just getting your feet wet with Flutter. But for a production grade application, this approach crosses the lines of the single responsibility principle and pushes us away from clean and maintainable code base. So how can we manage this better? This is what we're gonna be fixing today utilizing the state notifier subclass in conjunction with the state notifier provider of the riverpath package. So this is the current architecture of our phone out. As you can see, this is our UI that is calling the phone out API inside the sign in service class. So what we're gonna do here is to create a controller class between this UI class and the sign in service class that will handle the asynchronous state of the UI. That's the only responsibility of our controller class to make testing and debugging easier. So let's go ahead and put that in practice. Let me just create the class real quick. So there you go guys. We have created a sign-in screen controller class that extends the state notifier of type async value. But by the way guys, if you are not familiar with this state notifier, I have a separate video that walks you through how to use this state notifier provider. You'll find the link to that video in the description below, so be sure to check that out. And if it's first time you heard about this async value, this is a class provided by the RiverPad package designed to represent asynchronous operations in Flutter. Instead of dealing with separate variables to track loading, error, and data states, async value neatly wraps these three states into a single object. So if we check the definition of this async value, we can see that it contains this async data. This represents a data state which means the asynchronous operation has completed successfully and the data is available. It also has this async loading, a class that represents loading state. This signifies that an asynchronous task is currently in progress. And lastly, this async error that represents an error state. If an asynchronous task fails, Async value transitions to this state. Async error class holds the error that caused the failure and can be used to display error message 
or take another corrective actions. So moving forward, let me create the methods that we need inside our class. Inside this verify phone number method, before we call our API, we need to assign async loading to our state first. This keeps our users in loop, letting them know that something is happening in the background. After that, we now call the API through this async value.card method. And if you're scratching your head wondering what this is, this is a method from Riverpad that catches an error and returns an async error containing the error message. So this is a handy tool for managing an error. So what we'll do next is to save the result of our API call to a temporary variable first to check if the UI is mounted before assigning the state because we don't want to update the UI that is no longer mounted unless we want our app to crash. This is how this controller class works. So the next thing we need to do is to create the provider for this so that we can listen to it in our UI. Just like that, our sign-in screen controller class is now armed and ready for battle. So the next thing we need to do is to watch for the state of our provider and show loading spinner when our controller is in loading state. But where should we show a loading spinner when our controller is in a loading state? This depends on the requirement of your app, but for the sake of this demo in simplicity, Let's change our header text to a loading spinner when it's loading and change back to header text when it's not. There you go. After that, we need to listen to our controller for any possible error. But how can we do that? What we can simply do is to call the ref.listen method from the riverpath package. Passing the provider that we want to listen to. and a callback containing the previous and the next state. And inside this callback, it is where we will handle the error message that we receive from our controller. So what should we do if our controller throws an error? Well, this depends on your app's requirement once again. 
But for this walkthrough, let's show an alert dialog displaying the error message to alert our users, making sure that they are aware of the error because they need to close the dialog to confirm. So there, what we are doing here is calling the ref.listen method of the riverpad package, passing our sign-in screen controller provider. And then inside this function, we are checking if our controller is not loading and has an error. If that's so, then show an alert dialog displaying the error message. And since this pattern is often used, I recommend creating a util function for this to make your code dry and neat. So that's it guys, let's save our file and restart the app. But by the way, we need to remove the try catch that we have in our UI and call the sign in screen controller class that we have created instead of the sign in service class. Now let's try to test the loading spinner first if it's working correctly. But before that, let's add a delay to our function first to mimic a slow connection and also for us to be able to see the loading spinner. There you go, as you can see, the loading spinner is now showing correctly. And let's try our error handling. Let's throw a temporary message error here saying that invalid SMS code. Let's see if our controller can handle it and our listener is listening to it as expected. There you go, everything is working as expected. Alright, that brings us to the end of this journey guys. We've navigated through the maze of managing asynchronous operations in Flutter, witnessed our loading spinner in action, and ensures that our error handling is sharp and responsive. We've essentially built a system that's not just functional, but also user-friendly and resilient. Remember, great apps aren't just about flashy features. They're about providing a seamless and intuitive experience to your users. And with what you've learned today, you're well on your way to doing just that. So I hope this tutorial sheds some light on cleaner and more efficient way to handle your app's asynchronous operations. Thank you so much for tuning in. If this video helped you out, Please give it a big thumbs up, share it with your fellow Flutter enthusiasts, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more awesome content.